Hey guys, how's it going? Zeke here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the settings that I use on the Canon M50 to get great looking footage out of this camera. Now, I'm going to be honest here, I haven't been using this camera in a, in a while. I just never felt the urge to pick it up. You know, I've got the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, I've got the 5D Mark II that I shoot raw video on and the Canon EOS M, which is one of my favorite cameras to use for raw video. If you don't know how this camera can shoot raw, it's pretty much all over my channel where you can find out the settings that I use. But going back to the M50, I just felt the urge to pick it up for some weird reason. It was a really nice day. I went for a walk to a local lake and I just took some really amazing shots with the Canon 55 to 250. That was the only lens that I used on this camera and I shoot with cine style. I really like that picture profile. You get a really flat looking image where you can really tweak in post to your liking, which I really love about the cine style. And the other picture profile that I use is Vision Color. It's a paid picture profile, but I think it really looks cinematic. It's got that Kodak film-like look. Don't know how they got around to doing it, but I think it looks really amazing on the M50. So if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and see what it's all about and see if you like that picture profile. Peter McKinnon, Potato Jet, and a whole heap of other filmmakers on YouTube have reviewed this camera. And one of the main drawbacks has been the 2.56 times crop in 4K and the fact that there's no dual pixel autofocus with the 4K modes. So these two things can be quite limiting for some users. However, I think that the crop is an actual benefit. You can put 35 mil lens, it becomes a portrait lens. You can put the 55 to 250 on this and you get a really large focal range. Here's some shots of a bird that I took with that lens. I can zoom right in very close to it without scaring it. It's just really amazing how this crop factor in 4K can really work for your benefit. Now, another thing I love about this camera is the color science. Straight out of camera, you just get really, really nice colors, as you guys all know. Colors are all there, so you don't have to push around the skin tones or other stuff around too much in post. Like I said, I shoot with cine style, and I think the colors are really beautiful straight out of camera. All I have to do is just fix the exposure and the saturation, and, you know, the look is pretty much all there. Now, the good vlogging lens is a Canon 10-18. to I'm using it with a Canon EF to EOS M adapter and this makes a really great combo. It's very light and compact and it just fits really nice on the Canon M50. I'm pretty much vlogging just by holding the camera and that leads me to the next thing. If you're planning to vlog with this camera, this can come in real handy. This is a Gorillapod, uh, it's got no brand, it's really cheap and this thing works really well with the Canon M50 and the 10-18mm. to So it works pretty much just like that. If I take this thing off, you can see how small and light the actual mic is. And the good thing about it, you know, you don't need batteries. So there's no issues such as forgetting to turn the microphone off, which I have come across so many times. Just plug and play. And I mean, the sound coming out of this mic is really, really good for the price. Uh, it's definitely better than the Boya counterparts and all the budget ones around this price. I think this one is a really good option. Now I also did a quick test comparing the M50 to the EOS M raw video. I did it just over here and it's not really a scientific test. It's just, you know, what does this camera look like in 4K and 1080p in comparison to the raw video out of the EOS M? All right, so now I think it's time to get into the settings that I use. So uh, let's go check it out. All right, guys, I've got the Canon M50 here and you want to tap over to the left side and you want to be in manual movie mode so you can change the exposure and all the settings yourself. Um, I'm using 1 50th of a shutter and I've got aperture f4.5. I'm using the 10 to 18 mil. And then down over here, I'm shooting at 4K resolution, 23.98. Now, honestly, I pretty much always shoot 4K. I think the 1080p option is really good too, uh, but there's just something magical about the 4K. I really like the resolution and the detail. Uh, it's nowhere near an A6500, but you know, the beautiful colors are there and I just think it looks really nice. So next thing you wanna do is click menu and then on the wrench setting, go to number five, custom functions, click set. Now. This is going to show you that you can adjust these buttons to your liking. So if I click set, um, I've changed, you know, for example, the MFN button, which is up here. I've changed that to be able to select different picture styles. So if I go out of it, select MFN, there you go. I can change my different settings. So if I go back to menu, um, I can adjust all these different buttons to whatever setting I like. So I've got autofocus and manual focus switch. So all I have to do is press the left button. And then with this flash button, this is a magnification. So if I'm looking to the viewfinder and I want to magnify what I'm seeing, all I do is press that button over here on the right. And then I can zoom in and get focus spot on with this single button. So it's really cool. So with this trash can button, I can switch between different autofocus modes. I can choose tracking and stuff like that. And then with this asterisk button, if I'm using autofocus and I quickly want to do manual, all I do is hold down that button and I'm in manual focus and then back to autofocus, so it's really cool and it's just an awesome quick function. All right, let's go back to menu and then we'll go back to the movie modes. 
Now, if you're doing YouTube, 30 frames per second full HD is absolutely fine. Um, and then if you want to get higher than that, you would have to switch from PAL to NTSC. And then that will get you 720p at 120 frames per second. Now, if we go back, lens aberration, I've got them both set to on. And time-lapse movie mode, absolutely love this thing. So enable that and you can change to different scenes. So if you people in the city walking or clouds moving slowly, you know, it sets it up all for you. I like doing clouds and then you just go out of it and just click record. And then you press the info button if you want the screen to be on and off. So it's completely up to you and then just stop the recording and then disable when you're not using it. And I think this is just a really awesome mode to use. Now in terms of ISO, I'll always shoot at ISO 100. Um, if it's becoming really dark and I can't really see, then I bump it up to ISO 160. And I still find that the noise performance is really good. I personally don't shoot above ISO 320 on this camera, but I pretty much just leave it at ISO 100. That's where you get the best performance out of this camera. White balance, I like to leave at 5600 as a general rule of thumb. Um, never leave it on auto white balance because this thing just keeps adjusting itself. So I set it to 5600 and if I feel that it's a bit too warm, then obviously you just bring it down a bit or higher if it's a bit too cold. So, but as a general rule of thumb, 5600 and then white balance correction, this is completely up to you. I put it on amber, four stops to the right. Um, I just like the look of it. So the picture styles, this is the big thing. Um, I've got three custom loaded on. I've got Cine Style, I've got P Studio and Vision Color. So if we get out of it and press my quick button, um, you can see them change color slightly. So this is a good way of seeing, you know, what your different picture styles look like. So if we look at the settings for Cine Style, I've got sharpness to about two. I know some people leave it at zero, but I just personally go up to two and I think it's really good. It doesn't look too crisp. I think it's just a good balance. Contrast all the way to negative. And then the saturation is zero because once you put the files in your editing system, uh, the colors almost there. All you have to do is just a few tweaks and then you have your colors right where you want them. If you turn the saturation all the way down, then it's just a bit more work in post. Um, I like to see what I'm getting in camera and then just do minor tweaks in post because it is an 8-bit file. It's not 10-bit, it's not raw. I just want the best looking footage straight out of camera. So saturation zero, then color tone is set to zero as well. So these are pretty much the settings I use for cine style. Uh, very basic, very simple. And then I don't use Peace Studio, I use Vision Color. This one is like Kodak film. Uh, it just looks really amazing. So if I press info, uh, you can see the strength is to one sharpness, contrast all the way down, and then the saturation is plus one, and the color tone is zero. So on the screen, here's Vision Color, and then here's Cine Style. All right, so from the picture styles, when I want a natural look, Cine Style is the way to go. If I want something film-like, classical, vintage looking, then Vision Color is the absolute way to go. When I'm shooting dual pixel autofocus, I like to keep tracking on. Uh, when I'm shooting 4K, then I'll just leave one point autofocus on, so I can just set the focus and then leave it from there. It's not going to hunt or anything, it's just set focus from the half press shutter. Now manual focus peaking, you definitely want this on. Um, I've set it to high and yellow. Alright, so they're pretty much my settings. ISO 100, 1 50th of a shutter for 24 frames per second or 25 frames per second. And this is the way I go about shooting with the M50. Cine style and vision color are pretty much the profiles I prefer to shoot on this camera. They both deliver fantastic looking footage straight out of the camera, they look organic, natural, and just really brings this camera to life. People who are just starting out with photography or videography can just take out this camera and everything will just be really simple and easy to manage and follow. Now the grip of this camera, if you have big hands, you might want to get an extension grip. I sometimes struggle to get a good grip on this camera, so that's something to keep in mind. But all in all, it's a very compact light camera and it's just a really fun camera to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now it's your turn to take this camera out and get some cinematic looking shots. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.